Hey everyone, welcome back to Memorials Play Roddy Out of Stories. Uh, I'm sure you're wondering why I'm at the Baird Institute rather than where I was at the end of the last video. Well, I made a stupid mistake uh, when I was running through deals. There's actually a character in here we can finally recruit. We've been working on it for some, quite some time, which is why it's kind of funny. Well, actually, it's kind of probably the reason why I forgot about it, because it takes so long. It's You talked about five consecutive days, which I'm sure most of you are thinking of Johan, maybe. But considering how long this LP's been going on for him, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't remember. I believe he's in here. Yeah, I see him Hello. right here. No, not you, Franklin. Huh? Huh? You look at me or something, you're not to talk to me. Well, I don't need any more friends, you hear me? Oh, alright, I'll let you be my friends in exchange. You'll have to tell me about yourself. Okay, what? What? Oh, okay. I'll tell you about myself in letter form. Because I'll never make my. Never mind. Anyways, I'll just go ahead and meet you guys right back at the where I was at the end of the last video, so I'll see you guys later. And I'm back here in the Chic Music Store along with Hi. her. Hi. Hi, Pelly Crumbs. Oh, oh, that's not nice. Hi. You always want to talk to her? Here's the church bulletin. How many times do I have to tell them cheap ink rubs off on the hands? Well, you would know all about that, wouldn't you? Anyways, there's actually a couple things I'm going to try and do here. Let's hopefully. I, actually, I don't think I can turn in on the flyers just yet. I might have come too early for a couple of them. That will be in Club Vampire. It's pink. Oh, Pinky's not here. Darn it. That was one of the things I was going to show off. Oh well. Excuse me. I'm going to edit that out so you don't hear me do that. So anyway, when you walk in here, we have this trigger. And. Hey, <laughs> you. Do you know where you are? Yeah! Yes, I do. Uh, I'm like. You can read. I'm sorry. It's just so awkward trying to voice act these. Yo, Caleb, get him. Wait! Oh god, and I just keep doing it anyways. Bad habits die hard. I mean, it's not a bad habit, but I, I, I don't know. And something in the bathroom is clicking. That's kind of creepy. Do you want a piece of me? If you do, I'll... Hey, hey, we don't work if there's no money in it. Maybe I'll ask you. I have a favor. Oh god. Why the heck should I owe you a favor, especially with that creepy face? Why is he blushing? Never mind. Oh god, his face is so creepy. It's like, hi, I mean, you give this letter to the deputy chief. The deputy chief? Don't look so shocked, let it go, old friend. Accept it. Okay. Okay, I'll do it. Good choice. You'll make it big if you keep doing what betters tell you to do. Oh. Okay. Hey, Mr. Rick is like Gerald. Yeah, I know, I'm a kid. I'm sure they just threw that in there. Just for the sake of, in case you didn't know who the deputy chief was. Because honestly, I, when I first time I played this game, I probably didn't. But actually, the first time I played this game, I'd even do this side quest, since it's kind of obscure. Hi. You better take the letter and run the nocturne and give it just his mind. Hello. You should go soon. Hi. Do I talk to you? Is it you? Hi. Hello, what do you know? It's like Arbella, Servia, and Servio or something. <laughs> it's like the most slave sounding names possible. And of course, they work here. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and run back over to. Uh, Theater Van Cornell, I believe that's the next place I'm gonna want to go. Provided I don't have actually anything else planned between. Ah, uh, no, I don't. So, ah, uh, what the hell? I'll just talk. <laughs> How have you guys been? I'm sorry there weren't any videos this past week. I didn't really get a chance to record last Saturday or Sunday, which is which are the only days I can record. And hopefully this weekend they'll get a decent number of videos recorded, mainly because my, one of my roommates actually went back home for the weekend, despite the fact that we're going home for summer, like, two weeks, but he went back home for the weekend, for the, I think he and his girlfriend have an anniversary or something, so that leaves me and my other roommate, and my other roommate is studying for finals, almost, I would say obsessively, obsessive compulsively, but it makes sense, I mean, it's finals, they can dictate your grade. Which dictates what your GPA is, which kind of dictates what jobs you can get, which, you know, you kind of want to get a good job. <laughs> of course, we all have us the stream jobs, like, you know, being a pro gamer, that'd be pretty cool. That's just my thought. I've been watching a lot of, like, streaming. Streaming's really cool, in my opinion. It's pretty much, like, less playing, so that's not surprising.
Anyways, now I'm just getting paranoid. Every time I hear a slight noise, I believe my roommate is home from the library. And my voice is awkwardly deep right now. But rest assured, I have been wanting to report this for quite some time this week. But I actually had a final yesterday, which if... <laughs> don't ask me how that went. Oh, it's, it's really embarrassing, that class, I literally have like a 96-95 average, and I'm pretty sure I just murdered the final. Or the final murdered my grade, which is probably the most depressing thing that's happened to me in a long, long time. It's like, the class isn't hard, it's just, I didn't study diligently enough, and, you know, it's all my problems, it's just stupid mistakes on my end. All I think I do is do better next time. Thankfully, that was probably the best class I could have possibly have gotten that eye awakening in. Mainly since I can't really afford that in my other classes, except for maybe one. It was Gerald's room is right here. You can walk right in. He'll always be in here for this event, so let's go in here and trigger it. Hopefully, this is the right video game. And of course, the music changes, so it's not so distracting. Why so pensive? You know, not why so serious. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's just a letter. And then in... <gasps> you can't see it, but his eyebrows lifted. What's it say? One of the best songs of the game right here. At least one of the best cutscene music. It's so cool. I think it's called Men's Dirge or something. I have the soundtrack, so... <laughs> oh, crap. Anyways, we missed the exclamation question mark, which I'm guessing we were like a <gasps> or still like that, or what's intended to be. Then Jack runs on his own right here, and he runs all the way here. And Dan is like, "Oh, why in such a hurry? You know, did you see the he left a while ago." Which I don't see how he could have left a while ago, considering he left right before us. So, you know, not to mention where he's going, it'd be easier to leave the second floor so Thanos wouldn't notice. Oh well, maybe Jack is like stood around the room like, maybe I should do something. Where'd the deputy chief go? Wait, not true, I bet he knows. I gotta get the void fast. Yeah, let's get a void. Not really, because that's productive, and we don't like productivity in Let's Plays. So instead, we're gonna go do something else while I'm in the, while I'm in the area and at the time. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run over here to the bar, which I believe you don't ever really come in here separate this for this part. And I'm gonna get a couple characters recruited here, including our old leader, Jarvis. So come in here and talk to Gizki, or guys behind the counter. You want to do a favor? Sure. A couple of people I need to settle their tabs. Okay. Jarvis over there. Of the guild over there. He's sitting right in front of you. And what's your name from the accessory emporium down the street? I'm doing this right now mainly because I want to catch her while she's in her shop. It makes her real easy just to run in there. You know, mug her. Where's the money? Have it sticker in the bags. Or stick it in the sticker in the bag. <laughs> We're going to kidnap her now. Time to pay up! What's this, Sir Clutch for Geesk? I'm so sorry, I'm always forgetting to bring my purse along. Here, why don't you make sure you give it straight to Geesk? Please put it right in the bag. And they do that so you can't spend it yourself. Because Jack is a good little boy. But what I'm about to do here is very, very important. With Jarvis, it's kind of oddly specific how you have to work in order to get his debt. Anyways, you're gonna want to talk to him. Hello. And I can't imagine Gwyla, like, you in charge of the squad, but hey, the chief knows what he's doing, blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Actually, I was thinking about. Blah, blah, blah. Talk to him again. Hey. hey, hey, time to pay up. You're collecting for the pub? Listen, just give me a little more time. I'll, I'll give him more time. Yeah, thanks, I guess. Then come back to Geisk. Hi. Or Geisk, whatever his name is. Hey, I've got your great now. Thanks. Wait, the bag seems real light. That's just Yasmin's half. Yeah, so where's the money Jarvis owes me? He said to give him more time. <laughs> Worst hitman ever. Damn it, just keep like who's free the lowdown beep. Wait a sec, you're still guild, right? So you pay his bill, say what? Fuck! <sighs> and then paying your bill to pub. What, you settled my tab? Oh. That works! Okay, whatever. Uh. This episode is rated M for mature. <laughs> Anyways, I thought you always had to have under 5,000 day goals, but apparently you just need to pay his 5,000, the portion, and he'll be in your debts. Anyways, now we're gonna run all the way over to. Uh, where where am I going? Where am I going? Void community. <laughs> I'll probably meet you guys there for the sake of keeping this episode kind of short, since we have another cutscene coming up. But I'd like to get this Gerald Nocturne being taken care of in one video, so I can name it Men's Dirge. So then it makes sense, and it's a cool song name within the video. Double win.
You know, on second thought, it probably would have been more productive just to use the... Hand out the flyers now, so I can get them all in one spell. Fell swoop. Oh, well. Anyways, here we have every freaking thief known to mankind strolling in one alley, and the Radiata Knights team can't... No! How did you warp in front of me? Frick, no. <laughs> and the double wide, too. Jeez. I guess you can take the probably double entendre, but whatever. <laughs> take that however you want. So we're gonna run over this way. Hopefully there's no one in the way, and hopefully Pinky's here. Yeah, Pinky's here. So I'm actually gonna do a little something something. Kick him. Kick him. And the balls, ow. Stop it. Kick him again. Now you've made me upset and you're dead now. But I'm not dueling this guy for experience or money or anything. I'm mainly dueling him for a special item he drops, which is kind of amusing. <laughs> I'm not sure why he drops his item. It's probably because he has the afro. But I'll show you what it is here in a little bit. As soon as I beat him up, this really shouldn't take that long, so that's too damage. There we go. That's a goal of five seconds. Hopefully all battles were that easy. All one-on-ones, at least. Unfortunately, I'm kind of underleveled, under-experienced. See the Paya Papaya Papaya Dance. Or Paya... Paya Paya... Paya Paya Dance. However you pronounce that. Kind of weird. It's, it's, it's an interesting song, to say the least. Oh, you're a very good fighter. Yeah, I know I am. I already beat you, like, once in a... Anyways, we're back in here to see Nocturne. Or at least find Nocturne so we can figure out what the hell Gerald's have been up to, and... Where's all day Nocturne? You again? Me beat you up. I don't have time for you fools, I got bigger fish to fry. What? I swear old man Nocturne is he 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 trying to help your little friend. It's too late for Nocturne's the best. Whoosh. Falcon Gate is probably covered in blood. Yeah, blood everywhere. Oh god. So Nocturne and Gerald are probably fighting if they're saying blood is everywhere and I'm just cutting through all this text. I'm sorry if you want to read that. Basically, Jax is telling you where to go next in the plot. Anyways, that uh, I'm not gonna say that again. Anyways, your next. Oh, I said anyway, whatever. You just want to talk to her here, Servia? Hey, it's not my favorite guy. You want to know how, how I know you? It's a secret. Mm -hmm. Hi. Here's the church bulletin. Mm -hmm. For me, why? Thank you. Okay, there's one more, one down, and the last one is at this chick behind the counter here. Oh, hello. Hi. What's her name? Sylvia. Oh, it's not that. No, oh, well, that's all five flyers Grant handed us, so now we just have to go back and talk to him, and he'll join us. Which knocks another character off our list, which I don't think I'll be able to get all of the... Uh, I, I guess I'll finish up this Gerald deal in one video. Let's hope. I might have to cut it again. I'll probably cut to the Elosh in order, where hopefully I can talk to Grant and recruit him. Anyways, I'll see you guys there. Anyways, I'm back. Uh, we're Chances are, at this time, we're probably going to find Grant going towards his house, if not in his house by this point. Which, if he's in his house, I'm not sh entirely sure whether or not he'll join you, since people... I mean, this game, when people are in their houses, is like, do not disturb, forever hold your peace. And he's here, and Hello, what do you want? Oh, I delivered all your freaking flyers, snob. Anyways, yeah, we'll just talk to him tomorrow, no big deal. And there's no music! Why is there no music? This is slightly eerie. I'm pretty sure my Radiata Stories disc is getting kind of... Oh, there it is. Is getting kind of beat up at this point. I've played this game plenty of times, and it's gone through wear and tear. Plenty of it. Let's just hope it last stresses that Let's Play at least. If not, I do have a backup one I could probably use. It'll be kind of... I nah, whatever. Anyways, like Jack mentioned, we're gonna want to go see Elwyn up here. And, you know, naturally, every time we come running in, she's taking off her helmet. But we don't get to see what's under the helmet. Or behind the mask, or whatever. My my, that's quite an order. This is about Gerald, you know? For the most part, yeah. I know everything. So have yourself, have yourself, blah, 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 Elwyn knows right where to go. Or at least we knew where they were already, but apparently we need Elwyn to do anything. What happened to him? It's like this. Star Nocturne was a sergeant of the Theater Bank Corps a few years ago. No way. How are he absented after a certain incident? What kind of incident? Well... We're almost the fucking gate. Let's go. This is, 
This is the nifty part of the game. We get to see a little bit of backstory on a couple of minor characters that generally don't have much backstory in this game. Because there's so many characters, you can't really expect them to give every character a very thorough background. But, hey, what can you do? And here we have the awesome music again. I'll probably finish this part with this, this part. This part of this episode with this part of the game. Yeah. Smooth talker right here. You're not giving your all. Your blows are weak. You too. You seem a little out of shape. That's what she said. I told you that you're here to work together in Warrior's Guild, right? Iron Slasher Gerald and Sprinkling Shadow Nocturne. They were a powerful duo. But when the pop position for Deputy Chief opened, a rivalry rose between the two. Nocturne is the victor of the battle and decided the next Deputy Chief. What? Gerald held back. Nocturne found out. Which is the reason enough to leave. Yeah, that'd be kind of irritating, especially when you're know, in the Warriors Guild, which is completely based off pride. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm Deputy Chief because the person I was fighting let me win because I was injured. It's a ten year wait. No, wait. Whatever, we settle this now. Falcon Punch! Oh. <laughs> Looks like, oh, that's gotta hurt. And then they... Plunk. Why didn't he go back? Nocturne had picked up an injury the day before. Gerald blamed himself for that injury. So that's why he let him win. Yes, that did not sit well with Nocturne. He realized that he went off his strength. He went out of pity. The moral code of those two heroes led them to this unfortunate situation. However, it seemed that it all ended today. They got both got knocked out. Hopefully not dead. You're too strong. I can't win. You idiot, taking pity on me again. No, I'm telling you the truth. Why would I take pity on you now? Hey, why don't you come back? It's been long enough. We've chosen different paths. We have to continue down them, wherever they may lead. Since when did we start changing your minds about our decisions? Yeah, that's true. Which is a very nice moral story for us all to end on. We're all on our separate paths in the, you know, in the, in the woods. Traveling the road, never mind. I won't make a poetry reference. Anyways, this has been a Whitney Bell, and thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.